Good morning. All right, we are in John chapter uh, 13 today, reading verses 31 through 35. Let's go ahead and pray, then we'll read the scripture for the day. Heavenly Father, uh, God, we come to you um, needy, or hungry, and we're thirsty. We know that um, you provide for us so richly in your word. You gave your Son as food and drink to us. We pray that you would um, quench our thirst and and um, assuage our hunger as you have promised to do. Um, we pray that as we seek you in your word that we would find you. God, please be with us today as we study your scripture. Give us humility and submission. Um, help us to be obedient to your commands. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. All right, let's go ahead and read John thirteen thirty one through 35. Sorry, that is, <laughs> that's the wrong, that is the wrong passage there. Um, that's three, not 13. Let's get 13 up. All right, so here we go. When he had gone out, Jesus said, Now is the Son of Man glorified and God is glorified in him. If God is glorified in him, God will also glorify him in himself, and glorify him at once. Little children, yet a little while I am with you. You will seek me, and just as I said to the Jews, so now I also say to you, where I am going you cannot come. A new commandment I give to you, that you love one another, just as I have loved you you also are to love one another. By this all people will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. All right, so that is John 13, 31 through 35, not three. Okay, let's observe. So we see that Jesus tells his disciples that um, as the Son of Man is glorified, God is glorified in him. Also, that the Son of Man is glorified in God at once. He will only be with them a little while now. He tells them that they will seek him, but will not be able to go where he is going. He commands them to love each other as he loved them. And he says it is by their love for each other that people will know that they are his disciples. So, in the center of this passage is this um, statement that they will not be able to follow, or not, they will not be able to go where he is going. Um, uh, where I'm going, you cannot come. Which he also said to the Jews. So if they are his disciples, I think the question comes to my mind, then what's the difference? What's the point of being his disciple? If the Jews can't go where he's going, and um, neither can they, then why be his disciple at all? Well, I think if we go back to the instances where Christ said these things to those other groups, I think we can learn something really important. Um, in 734, Jesus is speaking to those who are sent by the Pharisees to arrest him, and he says that, that you will seek me and you will not find me where I um, am, you cannot come. And then in 821, he says, speaking to those who don't believe in him, right, in the temple, he says, you will seek me and you will die in your sins. Where I'm going, you cannot come. And there's an, an important, very key difference here between what he tells these other groups, the Jews, as he refers to them in this passage, and what he tells his disciples. Now, it is true that just as he said to the Jews, he says to his disciples that where I am going, you cannot come. But there's something he does not tell his disciples that he did tell the other groups. So the first group, those seeking to arrest him, he tells them, you will not find me. And then to the second group, the unbelievers in the temple, he says, you will die in your sins. 
He goes on to say that, that, that if, if they do not believe in him, they will die in their sins, right? So that's a very important difference. He does not tell his disciples that they will not find him. And he does not tell his disciples that they will die in their sins. What he tells them that is the same is that they will not be able to go where he is going. Yet. Later, he tells Peter, you will follow me afterward. But as of right now, you will not be able to go where I'm going, is what he's telling them. So, um, really important. And the difference is a difference of omission, something he does not tell his disciples. So they will be able to find him, and they will not die in their sins. And it is because they are his disciples. Um, and how? How will they know for sure that they are his disciples? We know that um, someone is brought to belief in Christ, is brought to submission um, to, to Christ and obedience to God through the Father drawing. Right? No one can come unless the Father draws. We know that. But how do we know? How, could, how do we have certainty that we have been drawn? It is through our obedience. We can look at our lives and see the fruit that is born out when God changes a heart and when the Holy Spirit indwells a believer. And when that happens, we obey Christ's commands and we love to do it. It's a joy to us. Not always easy, but it's a joy. And the commandment Christ gives them here, that is a new commandment, is to love one another. Love one another just as I have loved you, he says. This is his new commandment, and this is how all people will know that you are my disciples. All people would include us. This is what gives us assurance. We love just as Christ loved. So people looking from the outside will see oh, their love for each other. They're clearly Christ's disciples. We can look at each other and say, well, clearly, we are Christ's disciples. We have love for one another. But it's important to note how we are to love, as Christ loved. And how did Christ love his disciples? Well, what is the context in which he is speaking? He is um, having communion, community with his disciples. He is pouring into their lives. He is serving them with humility washing their feet, humbling himself, and serving them. He's also speaking with great truth and, and directness to them, speaking things that are not easy to hear. This is the way he's loving them as well. Right after he says this, you're to love each other the way I love you, he tells Peter that he's going to betray him, that Peter's going to betray Jesus. This is the way he loves his disciples, by telling them the truth, hard truths. Also by, and also by serving them humbly. It's not just a, all, all the time he's just washing their feet. And it's just not all the time he's giving it to them like hard truths. No, he's giving them what they need when they need it. I'm washing your feet. I'm speaking a hard truth to you. I'm being your friend and coming alongside you. I'm feeding you from my hand. I'm allowing you to lean against me and ask me questions. This is the way we live with each other as believers, just as Christ gave us his example. All of these things are part of how Christ loved his disciples. If he were to remove the speaking of truth to them, he would not have been loving them in the, the godly, appropriate way he did. 
if he were to re remove the, the service, the humble service to them, it would be not, not be the love of Christ. If he, if he were to remove the coming together, the gathering, and the actual spending time together, fellowshipping, as we do when we, we go to church, it would not be the love of Christ. All of these things are necessary for believers, for Christ's disciples, to love each other as Christ loved his disciples. That's why it's so imperative for us as believers to not forsake the gathering, you know, to actually get together with other Christians. You, you can't just um, commune with them from afar. All right, these videos that um, I'm doing are, are for edification, for, for learning, for devotions, um, but they're still private. I mean, you can see me, I can't see you, we can't talk to each other, we're not physically with each other, there is no um, fellowship here. We must come together as a church to do that, as Christ did with his disciples. That's how he loved them. To serve one another in this humble, selfless way, we have to be with each other. Um, I mean, for things like physically, you know, serving each other. Right? There, are, there are ways we can, we can serve each other without being there, but there is a service that can only be done in the presence of someone. To physically be with someone and, and, and interact with them, to eat with them, to worship with them. All of these things have to be done in person, and this is what Christ does with his disciples. It's the way he loves them. All of these things are necessary to be sure, to have this assurance. By this, all people will know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another. If we can't display love for one another, how will the world know what it looks like to be a disciple of Christ? How do we put on display that the glory and the love, um, how do we communicate Christ to people if we can't display his love? So if we want to know him and not die in our sins, if we want to eventually be able to follow him to where he is going, right? which is actually, as it said in the beginning of the passage, uh, to be glorified with the Father, that's where he's going, to glory. That's where we will eventually follow if we are his disciples. If we want these things, then we must obey his commands and love his disciples, love each other as he loves them. And now, just to reiterate, these things are not the cause, but they are the fruit the cause is his grace and love changing us. That's what causes us to want to obey. To actually, He gives us the love for each other. And those things are evidence that we are his disciples, that we have been made his disciples, as the Father has drawn us to be so. So my takeaway for today is that what distinguishes a Christ follower from the rest of the world is the love we have for other Christ followers. The world hates Jesus' disciples because it hates Jesus. But we love and serve each other as Jesus did. When we seek him, we will find him. And where he has gone, we will follow afterward. Let's pray. Lord God, Thank you for the church. Thank you that you have given us um, a body to be a part of. A body that is knit together with your own hand. That works together as you have designed. That loves and serves itself as each member of the body serves the other members. And all of that works together to glorify you and serve you, Christ. And to give an example to the world of what it looks like to be your disciple. God, we pray that we would not leave out any, any of these 
examples that you've given us of, of what it means to love the other people in our church, the other believers in the body of Christ, whether it be fellowship, service, truth, community, worship, all of these things being so important are there to glorify you. Help us to honor you in this way by obeying your command. Christ, we love you. We need you. And God, we want to honor you as in the Holy Spirit's power we obey. Please help us do this. We pray all of this in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, everyone, have a wonderful day. I will see you again.